Next on Worcester News Tonight, recovering from a violent attack. We hear from the Southbridge nurse stabbed by a patient. Plus, baseball fans rallying for the Worcester Bravehearts, competing in their third title in four years. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Katherine Andrioli. We're hearing from the Southbridge nurse who was stabbed and seriously injured back in June. Elise Wilson says she's lucky to be alive and now wants to use her story to keep other nurses safe. Our Olivia Lemon has her story. For more than 40 years, Harrington Hospital was like a second home for Elise Wilson. Two months ago, everything changed when she was attacked and stabbed by a patient. I saw him standing over me again and now he had a knife in his hand and he had it raised over his head. Next thing I knew, he had brought the knife down. He had stabbed me in the neck on the right side. The emergency room nurse suffered stab wounds to her neck and arm. Elise says it's left her with limited mobility. Recovery is a slow process and after weeks of physical therapy, she is able to move her arm again. I can actually move my fingers a little bit. I can't really feel them. So I don't have a lot of function, like to pick things up. Elise says she was working full time before the attack and hoped to retire soon. Now her future is uncertain. My plan was to retire and work part time per diem, but I don't know if I can function. I uh, maybe I'll still plan on doing that. In the meantime, she's supporting a bill named after her. Elise's law would require hospitals to come up with safety plans and update them yearly. You just cannot do this and get away with it anymore. It just has to stop because we need nurses and healthcare workers out there to take care of us. And if they're afraid to do their jobs, we just can't, as a society, we just can't deal with that anymore. She says Harrington Hospital has taken safety precautions since the attack, like supplying nurses with a panic button lanyard. There's no sound that goes off on it, but it alerts the security team that there's something going on. Support from family, friends and strangers has made not being able to return to work easier. And Elisa's hope is her experience will help better protect nurses. I've got to put a positive spin on it or else it was all for nothing. Now, Elise has a long road ahead of her, but she is strong. Her friends even call her Wonder Woman. Before this experience, she was already a two time cancer survivor. Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. CPH issues advisories for nine bodies of water across the state after toxic algae is detected in the water. Buffumville Lake Park in Charlton is one of those lakes close to swimmers. Mass DPH says cyanobacteria, also known as blue-green algae, can be dangerous to swimmers and if exposed can cause health conditions ranging from skin irritation to gastrointestinal illness. As of today, eight other lakes in Massachusetts are closed to swimmers due to algae. Mass DPH says the algae is often caused by a runoff from lawn fertilizer and sewage. You can visit Mass DPH's website for a full list of closures. The Worcester Bravehearts are back in the championship series of the Futures Collegiate Baseball League. The team is hosting game one tonight in Worcester and fans are excited to, to see their team back in the finals. Our Cam Jandro was there tonight and has more. Cam? Catherine, the atmosphere down on College Hill was absolutely electric tonight. Fans pack in over Insurance Park as the Bravehearts try to make it three titles in four years. When it comes to making the FCBL Championship Series, the Worcester Bravehearts are batting a thousand. <laughs> the team has played for the Futures League title in all four years of its existence, an accomplishment FCBL Commissioner Chris Hall says is a testament to ownership. The Creighton family uh, it works their tail off 24-7 to make this thing work every summer. Uh, they don't take any time off. Once the season's over, they'll start working at it for next year. A big crowd showed up Friday to cheer on the Brave Hearts in Game 1, and fans are pumped to see Worcester hit the field and play for another ring. Very excited. Uh, we've been uh, following the Brave Hearts since they started, and uh, Andrew uh, has been going to the Brave Hearts camp the past couple years, and now we just follow them to try to get every, as many games as possible. Very excited, very excited. You know, beginning of the year, I didn't think this team was going to be anywhere. The Bravehearts have quickly become one of the most popular teams in the league, taking home the honor of most attendance in 2016. Fans at Friday's game say even in a down year, they love to come support Worcester's local baseball team. This is kind of crazy because this is the first time we've won four in a row all season, and they did not give up last night, and they didn't go down quietly. Oh, they showed right first part of the season, then... You know, they got it going in the second half. And there's no lack in confidence when it comes to the Bravehearts in the championship series.
I think they're very fortunate winning two, 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 first two games. Two games and a uh, seven to four Bravehearts victory. Five four Worcester. Now game two takes place tomorrow night in Nashua. Brenna Wilson will have a complete recap of tonight's game later on in sports. Catherine. Thank you, Cam. And although their trip to the finals seemed all but gone last week, the team managed to pull through. Brittany Schaefer has more from the ballpark. Now this is the Braveheart's fourth year in a row making it to the Futures League Championship and they've only been a team for four years. Players say after such a tough season, this would be the sweetest victory yet. Well hit to right field, this one carrying back off the top of the wall. Despite a losing record in regular season, the Worcester Bravehearts once again find themselves in the Futures Collegiate Baseball League's Championship Series. It's been a little bit of an improbable run for us to get here. Last Saturday night, I gave what I thought was going to be a goodbye speech to the crowd because it was the last regular season game and it didn't look like we were making the playoffs. During the regular season, the team didn't win more than three games in a row, but the Bravehearts advanced to the championship by winning four straight. This would be the most incredible one that I've seen yet. Uh, it would be the most unrealistic run. It, it's like uh, this would be the Hollywood script. The team faces the Nashua Silver Knights in game one tonight, the same team who beat Worcester last year in the finals. It's about going out and getting it and, and, and competing and, and who wants it more. And uh, uh, our guys have proven in the last week that uh, they're not ready to go home. We're hoping we can uh, get revenge on Nashua. I'm excited to take it from them this year, hopefully, and take one home for Worcester. Outfielder Nick Santucci says to beat the Silver Knights, the team will have to play their best. I think our defense is what's going to have to come together to uh, win this game, essentially, and try to minimize the errors. The Bravehearts say a big factor working in their favor is their fans. I don't think I've ever seen a greater home field advantage than, than being at a Worcester Bravehearts game. I mean, the fans really do impact uh, the game. We're going to be able to feed off of our crowd and use their energy to go out and play a, a good, solid baseball game today. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. Now to hockey, the Worcester Railers announcing a new partnership with the Ecotarium today. The museum received a generous donation from the organization. It's all part of a five-year, $250,000 scholarship sponsorship excuse me, by the Railers HC Foundation. The sponsorship has allowed the Ecotarium to buy a new train engine from Chance Rides of Wichita, Kansas. The new engine number 395 is a replica of the 1863 C.P. Huntington steam, steam locomotive. The train station has also been repainted in the hockey team's colors. The scenic 12-minute train ride is a fun way for families to enjoy the museum. Ecotarium Eco President Joseph Cox says they're thrilled to be partnering with Worcester's newest hockey team. This is about um, building awareness about what both the Ecotarium and the Worcester Railers Hockey Club are doing. But ultimately, it's everyone pulling together to really give more opportunities for family experiences in the city of Worcester. So we're really excited. Well, we felt that uh, by providing and helping uh, sponsor the train and, uh, and the programming at the Ecotarium, we showed uh, you know, just how much we care about the community and, and, uh, and how much we're looking forward to being involved in community outreach and some of the educational outreach provided here at the Ecotarium. The Egotarium says approximately 50,000 visitors ride the train each year. The Worcester Railers inaugural season kicks off October 14th. The Worcester Family Health Center holds their annual Neighborhood Health Fair today. Thousands came out to the event to enjoy dozens of free services like health screenings, lunch and registering to vote. The president and CEO of the Family Health Center in Worcester says in Massachusetts, one in six people use a community health center to see their doctors. She says the annual event is an easy way for families to get a variety of services. The turnout is great. This is such a good day for the neighborhood and we're so happy to host the neighborhood. There's a lot of fun, there's a lot of educational opportunities, there's healthy food um, and so we really appreciate that our neighborhood comes out to celebrate with us. And the fair is a celebration of National Health Center Week. 
28 10th graders from Maine South participated in a program called the Adam Achievers at Clark University. The two week summer program allows students to learn more about the community they live in, as well as experience what college is all about. Students put together research projects about gangs in Worcester, architecture and youth opportunities. The creator of the program says it's important to get kids interested in college at an early age and see their community from a different perspective. It's very um, important for folks to be conscious about their surroundings. I think um, they hear a lot of the negative, negative views of Maine South, and they have a lot of pride in their neighborhood, and they should. Maine South is rich with amazing, amazing individuals, businesses, um, colleges, um, and folks that really care about their community. Clark graduate students also participated, and this is the fifth year the program has run. The Worcester Police Department adding two new officers to its canine unit. The dogs went through extensive training and they're now ready to help protect the city. A Roslyn Flaherty has the story. A Worcester Police canine helps take down a suspect. Canines Beebs and Elvis are the newest additions to the Worcester Police Department. The two completed more than 12 weeks of intense training at the Boston Police Canine Academy. Now they are ready to patrol the streets of Worcester. He's patrol certified, um, so he can track uh, missing children or suspects. Um, if we go into a building, somebody's hiding in a building, we don't know where they are, he can locate them in the building. Friday, the dogs showed off their new skills like handler protection and searching for a weapon. Beebs and Elvis will join two other canines currently on the force. Police Chief Stephen Sargent says the canines are needed all the time. We'd have to call the state police or we'd have to call one of our local friends or partners outside the city. City outside should be able to just, you know, just, just for safety of the officers and, and crime scene preservation, we should have our own dogs. Officer Daniel Pinellatori is Beavs' handler. He says the dogs are primarily used for searches and apprehending a suspect is a last resort. If there's a suspect armed with a weapon, um, you know, if somebody's fighting, um, it's an officer safety thing. So if we feel that he will be able to, you know, protect myself or other officers, that's when he would be brought in. Officer Pinellatori says he and Beebs have a great relationship and the dog knows when to play and when to work. As much as he is a working dog, you know, he's also, he's still a dog at the end of the day. Roslyn Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. If you're hoping to win big, you may have a chance this weekend as the Powerball Lottery climbs up to $356 million. Many were out getting their tickets in Worcester tonight in hopes of hitting the jackpot. Mega Millions is now up to $393 million. The combined jackpots are worth more than $749 million. The Mega Millions drawing takes place tonight at 11 and Powerball Saturday night, so if you're looking for some luck, it could be your